electricity saving box. Carl reckons that uh, you can save, well, the claim is that uh, save 20 to 30% of your power bills just by plugging the stupid thing in. Ah, oh, you've got to be shitting me. And thankfully, they didn't uh, weld, seal this shut or potted or anything like that, although they've potted whatever's in here. So this is their secret source. They haven't just... Well, it, it is just a capacitor, right? It, like, what else is bloody well going to be in there? But that's actually a potting box, and they've put something in there, because this is su supposed to be... An intelligent energy saver. Intelligent. The result is the best. Um, so, yeah, have they put just like a board in there or is it just like two just dangling loose wires in a potted box? Let's see if we can measure it. Yep. It's a capacitor. Look, 2.86 microfarads are minus 90 degrees. So it's, it's almost perfectly a capacitor. So there you go. Dissipation factor, 0.001, as good as you get. It's a bloody cap. Let's do a very quick demo of this. This won't be a tutorial on power factor and everything else, but I'm just going to plug in a scope here into my power meter, which I'll show you in a separate shot. I'll show you with and without this thing, and you'll see that, well, it's going to make a difference. This thing's got a DC to DC converter, so it's going to have a poor power factor, but let's, let's see if this heap of shit improves it with a typical product, with a typical DC to DC converter you might have plugged in. Now this is without our power correcting wankerizer gadget, okay, so this is just the scope on its own. You can see it's drawing 18.7 watts here, and by the way, watts for a typical consumer and also in my small office that I've got here, I am being charged watts. Your, if your bill says kilowatts, uh, you're being charged kilowatt hours, then you're paying for real power, not apparent power, which we're going to have a look at in a second. VA, because look, if we have a look at this, this is apparent power, and sure enough, it's drawing a lot more apparent power. So, um, But unless your uh, electricity bill says you're being charged in uh, VA, then you're not being charged for this power factor. So even if this thing worked and corrected your power factor, you're not, gonna be, you're not being charged for it, so you don't save a damn cent. Anyway, so you can see that the power factor is just a ratio VA uh, versus watts, and the power factor is about half. So let's plug in the wankerizer gadget and see if it makes a difference. That power factor, if this thing works, it should be a higher power factor because uh, the closer you get to one, the better. You're correcting for that. So here we go. We've got to plug it in. Ta-da! Plugged it in. What's it done? Wah, 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 wah. It's actually lowered the power factor. It's drawing more. Look at this. What the hell? It's drawing 80, uh, 70 VA. It's useless. It's made it worse. And it's drawing a little bit more real power because of the LED in there. Jeez. It's just, it does, it, not only does it not work, it makes it worse on a typical DC to DC converter product. Oh. Now, I'll just show you something different, a different type of load. I've got my air purifier here. I've got it on maximum, so you can probably uh, hear that. Normally, I have it on low and it's whisper quiet. You can't hear it at all. But it's basically just a big-ass fan. That's, you know, it's got a little display and control and everything. But uh, basically, I've got it on full. So it's pretty much, you know, and that inductive motor load. So this power factor correction, you know, if you just put a capacitor across it, it should actually make a difference. And here it is. Okay, it's drawing 94 watts. And an apparent power, 101, so it's got a pretty good power factor correction ratio. Usually, if you're above 0.9, you wouldn't bother to implement anything to solve it. But I think just putting a capacitor across this, this will go up slightly. So let me plug it in, 0.929. Let's have a look. Here we go. Plugged it in. What's it up to? Yep, there we go, 0.947. There we go, so it has improved point. 9.5, oh, it's going up. So it has, an, has improved it because it's basically an inductive load. So putting a capacitor in parallel, yes, the theory is right. So these, like all these quack uh, scam products, they're ba like, you know, audio fool products and things like that. They're based on an element of technical truth. But you're not 
paying, but most houses are not like this. It's not gonna make a difference and you're not even paying for this apparent power anyway. You're paying for the real power. So it makes no difference. But watch what happens if I actually lower this thing, lower the speed on this, there we go, back down, now the power factor is much worse. This is with the capacitor in there, okay? So now I've got that on, hang on, I'll put that on the lowest, so that's the lowest setting, there you go, 0.53, okay, that's with the capacitor, and without it, 0.7. There you go. Once again, it's made it worse. It depends on the type of load that you're actually doing. If you've got a pure inductive load, then yes, these things can make a difference, even though you're not paying for it. It's only really the industrial customers that are going to pay for this apparent power. Because I changed the uh, speed of the fan there, now it's not drawing much at all. Therefore, the electronics in it are taking more as a percentage of that and it's becoming less of a pure inductive load. It's becoming a, a complex DC to DC converter load more now. So that's why the power factor has dropped very significantly compared to when the fan was on maximum. But of course, the interesting thing about all this uh, real versus apparent power and everything else, okay, yeah, uh, we plug this wankerizer gadget in, okay, and uh, it gives us a much worse power factor, okay, so it's pretty bad, so it's, you know, so, like, you know, environmentally and grid-wise and everything else, this is, in this case, if everyone had one of these uh, air purifiers and then plugged in one of these, then there'd be a, you know, a fairly substantial increase on the grid to actually provide that power, but you won't actually pay anything more because uh, your, this is what you'll pay. This is real power, okay? So, well, you'll pay a little bit more because of the little LED in here, as we saw before, right? So, it's drawing, uh, it's taking 23.3 watts at the moment. That's real power. That's what you're paying for on your bill, okay? So, I'll go plug it in, and you'll see it. It'll probably go up slightly. Yeah, it's gone up, you know, because it has to display the LEDs and a few other little factors. But, you know, basically, as far as your electricity bill is concerned, it's, you know, <laughs> it's going to be exactly the same. It hasn't done anything. Just like we saw before, it actually slightly increases the consumption. Oh, these things are a complete fail. Because the thing is, an ideal capacitor actually takes zero energy. It takes no power, consumes no power whatsoever. So if we repeat that and I actually disconnect the LEDs, disconnect everything else, all we've got is just the capacitor across the thing. You'll see that the power basically won't change at all because as we saw before, this is a pretty darn good capacitor. So here we go, we're taking uh, 23.22, it's going to fluctuate a little bit. Let me go plug it in. Here we go, this is with nothing, uh, with just the capacitor itself. And no more LEDs. There we go, just a like, smidgen, because maybe like we don't have an ideal capacitor there, but it's pretty darn close, it's bugger all. Ideal capacitors don't take any power. And it actually really matters where you place this thing uh, relative to the load that you're trying to compensate as well. You can't just have it willy-nilly on the other side of the house. It, it's not going to work the same. It's just it, To think that just whacking a capacitor on one of the power points in your home can uh, fix anything. I don't know. What do they try and market these? You know, oh, you need one of these per appliance, you know, to plug it in right next to it. Oh, oh, oh. So although most residential customers are only paying for this real power here, you are not paying for this apparent power, which means that these boxes are just complete bullshit. Even if you do correct the power factor, you have the particular type of appliance, you're just not going to save any money. They are a scam. But there might be some countries out there where residential uh, customers are actually paying for that. I don't know. I can only speak for here in uh, Australia and in uh, New South Wales where I live anyway. But even if you don't pay 
for it, this apparent power is still a real problem. And of course, poor power factor like this, VA is volts times amps. So the utilities ultimately have to uh, provide more current down the line, uh, down the transmission line. And of course, more current down the transmission line equals I squared R losses. The losses are squared. So of course, the utilities really take this seriously, this power factor, and they put in power factor correction. Here's a photo of a particular power factor correction capacitor bank or condenser bank as they you know might be known in the industry to actually correct for these sorts of things because they don't want to be providing any more current than they have to so uh, that's why uh, a lot of industrial customers they will they will be paying for VA your bill will be in uh, volt amps so uh, yes it pays if you've got a lot of you know motor drives and all sorts of industrial machinery or something you know you really and you're paying big electricity bills it can really pay to uh, put in power factor correction, but you don't just plug in one of these stupid five buck things you get on eBay. You know, you install, you measure it properly and you install professional uh, capacitor banks to actually correct for that. So from an environmental point of view and an overall system uh, grid cost point of view, yeah, you know, it's a real major problem that the utilities are certainly aware of. It's no magic secret that, you know, oh, the energy cartels are keeping from us, you know, just buy this magic box and, you know, oh, you can beat the en big energy. Ugh. So if every residential customer had an overall poor power factor, you know, of 0.5 or something, that'd be a real concern for the utilities. And they do, as I said, do do certain things, power factor correction, to actually compensate for that. And what your overall house is doing there, eh, if the utility companies were really that concerned, they'd be installing VA meters to charge for apparent power instead of real power. But yep. Adding a capacitor across your power point at home is just complete and utter bullshit. Oh, goodness. These things are just garbage. Do not buy them. Yes, I had to uh, uh, get medieval on the arse of that thing to make it fit with the adapter. Anyway, yeah, do not buy these things. They are a scam based on, yes, an element of engineering truth. But yeah, don't let that fool you. It can even like make your bill worse as you saw. And a one little couple of microfarad cap against your whole house supply. Uh, like even if you had a big, everything was, you know, purely inductive, it, it's going to make a rat's ass difference. Just don't touch these things. They are 100% scam. So there's only one place these things belong.